Okay, we have, so far, we've been talking about what kind of functions? Linear. Very good. Linear functions. So, and a linear function, we've been talking about slope. A linear function has, how would you, what kind of change is it? In other words, what, um, when you have that slope, it's, it's a constant, yeah, consistent change, right. Right, I was using the example of, if you, um, If we were to plot, if I said that the warming up of the temperatures today fit a linear function, let's say it's warming up consistently, it's a constant, let's say it warms up two degrees every hour. Okay, I didn't look, my thermometer wasn't working this morning. Anybody looked to see what it was this morning when you got up? Was it in the 30s or was it, was it 38? I heard it was supposed to get pretty cold. So let's say it warms up by two degrees every hour. So maybe at, you know, five o'clock this morning it was 38 degrees, and then at six o'clock it was 40. And so if it were, if it followed pretty much that straight line, we could say it's a linear function. Okay? What we're going to just look at with piecewise. They're also they're still gonna, they're going to be lines, but we're going to break little. We're going to have little pieces. In other words, you can a lot of times see you'll see graphs like this in the when you look in the paper. Or if they have um, different charts and stuff, you might see a graph like this. You know, say if they're talking about maybe the stock market or something <laughs> like that, or um, other type of data that changes. So it's not just one nice line. There's, I have here one, two, three, four, five different lines. So there are five different pieces. That's why we're going to call these piecewise functions. So what we have to do is we're going to write, this is going to be a linear function right here for that piece. And then this is going to be a different linear function right here for that piece because this has a positive slope, this one has a negative slope. Okay, let me um, just do like three pieces here. Let me just re-graph that and do three pieces. Okay. And let's just say that this is our time again. Let's say this is... 2005, let's say right here, this is 2000, let's say, um, let's say years since 2000, uh, let's just say since 2003, okay? Okay, so that'll bring us up to 2010. So I just wanted to give you an idea of how these will be set up. So instead of like over here, where we might say, let's say if it's a function of temperature, that's a positive slope. I'm just going to make something up. Um, let's say that it was 38 degrees this morning, so let's say that that's our... That's our y-intercept right here. What we're going to do over here is how you're going to how the notation is going to look. We'll have our function, but now we have three different pieces. So what I'll do is I'm going to draw a little brace here, and we'll have three different pieces. In other words, we would have, and let's actually let's do it as a function of time again a function of time and let's say that it's this positive one I'm just going to make up some numbers just because I want you to see what the what, how you'll write it out let's say 2t plus 1 so it's a positive slope of 2 
let's say this one's a negative slope, so let's say negative one third x plus five. And then let's say this one's a positive slope, so let's just say three x plus six, okay? I'm just kind of made up some numbers. So we use this function, we use this line. We use this line if we're between which years? One, if t is between 1 and 3, right? So you'd say we're going to use this line right here, this piece of our piecewise function. We can use this piece if our time is greater than 1 but less than 3. So if you're in between 1 to 3 years after 2003, you're going to use this function for the growth of the stock market or whatever. Okay? When are we going to use this piece? And actually, this is supposed to be, I wanted a T in there. When are we going to use this middle function? What uh, year? What's that? When well, it's between three and five years. So we're going to use this function. This is a T. If T is, we'll say greater than or equal to three, and we'll say less than five. Okay. And then this last function gets used if it's the last piece of the function, I should say. When it's more than five years away. Okay. We'll say five or more. Just wanted to give you an idea. Okay. Now, here are some actual. Let me give you this as a. All right. I wanted to show you this graph here. How many pieces does it look like this one has? Yeah, probably three. You got this one right here. Kind of, it starts flattening out here, but it almost looks like it could be almost like a parabola a little bit. And then we've got this piece right here. That's a pretty steep negative slope. And then you've got this third piece right here. So we might say, again, just to give you an idea of the notation, this is a graph of the set of Toyota Prius with its miles per gallon. So in other words, you get, where do you, about what speed do you get your optimal gas mileage? 25. Yeah, maybe, looks like it kind of peaks out somewhere in here, so somewhere at Somewhere in there, 25 to 30. So, I mean, yeah, that's pretty awesome. If you are driving, if you just drive at 25 miles an hour, you're getting, you're getting like 86 miles per gallon, which is pretty nice. Um, but then, <clears throat> if you go on the highway and really start speeding up, your gas mileage just really tanks down. Now those those cars are pretty cool if you've ever I think they usually do the um, is it the the battery or power when you first turn it on it's like if you first turn it on like you can't even hear the car because it's it's going off of um, well it's for in a we're in a city with a lot of cars it's nice because it's really quiet and then after a while then I think the other part of the engine kicks in but um, okay, anyways, to give you an idea of the notation, I wanted to show you this. Let's say, guys, this is a, um, let's say your gas mileage, and what is, what does our gas mileage basically dep mainly depend on? What your speed is. So I'm going to say, remember, this is just the name of the function. I'm just going to call it G for gas mileage. It's a function of speed, so I'm going to put S in there. We have three different pieces, so I put equals, I draw my braces, I'm going to have three different pieces. 
Okay, so instead of just one nice function with a nice line like we've been doing, we're still doing linear functions, but it's going to be with different pieces. So this first piece, I'm just going to make up, we know parabolas have a x squared in them. I'm just going to make something up, let's say 2x squared minus 1. Oops, it's a function of speed, so i got to use s. Okay. Let's just say 2s squared. If my speed is what? From, so this, will cut this part of this piece will calculate my gas mileage. If my speed is, let's say, greater than zero and less than, where does this go up to? Should we say like, 40. sure, let's just say 40. So from 0 to 40, this piece will calculate our gas mileage. Okay. Then we'll do another. That's a really steep line, really steep negative slope. Let's say something like negative 10x plus 1. Let's say I want s in there, negative 10s plus 1. Okay. That's if my speed is, we'll just throw out some numbers. Let's just say in between 40 and 45. I'm going to say greater than or equal to 40 and less than or equal to 45. Okay. And this one also is a negative slope, but it's more gradual. Let's say something like negative 3x. Ah, I don't want to keep thinking x. I want its speed in there, so s, negative 3s. If my speed is greater than 45, okay? Now, I want to give you an idea of how this notation works. So let's say I said I want to figure out my gas mileage for 30 miles an hour. And I should do a little, uh, let me just do S squared. Let's say one half s squared. Okay. Again, I mean, these won't be realistic numbers. I just made up some pieces here. Which one of these three pieces would I put that into? A speed of 30 miles an hour. Which one is that going to fall into? The first piece, the middle piece, or the bottom piece? First piece, because this is when our speed is between 0 and 40, right? So I plug in 30, I plug it in here, 30 squared is going to be 900, half of that, so we would say 450. And I know it's not a realistic number, but I just want to get you just the mechanics of how you work it. Okay, what if I said my speed, I want to figure out my gas mileage. My function is to figure out gas mileage for a speed of 43 miles an hour. Which one would I use, the top one, the middle one, or the bottom one? The middle one, right? That's for speeds of 40 to 45. So if I put that in there, negative 10, so that's negative 430 plus 1. Okay. Now, what if I said I wanted my speed for, I want to figure out my gas mileage for 45 miles an hour. Which one would I use? Still the middle one, right? Because this is if the speed is, I wrote, less than or equal to 45. So I'd still use the middle one. So it would be negative 450 plus 1. Okay? Now let's look at some little bit easier examples. Now we're going to work, let me, okay. What I did here is I actually gave you the piecewise function. So we're going to kind of work backwards from what before we were looking at some graphs and we wrote a function. 
Now I'm giving you the function and we're going to draw the graph. We're going to kind of work both ways. Sometimes I'll give you the function, you'll have to draw the graph. Sometimes you'll have the graph and you'll have to write the function. So both ways. I'm going to kind of break it into three nice steps that you can use. The first step, in other words, where does, say if we were talking about gas mileage, where does it change from one piece to the next piece? At what speed? At one mile an hour, right? So we might have, say if this is our speed and this is our gas mileage, I'll tell you what, let me, I'm going to just change this just to make it a little bit easier to see on my graph. Let's just say, again, I'm just kind of making this up. Let's say that this car that we have, that we're going to plot the piecewise function for the gas mileage. Let's say that it uses the battery up until five miles an hour. So now as you start the car, you start driving down the driveway, you're just operating on battery. The gas engine hasn't turned on yet. But then when you get, when the engine senses that you're above five miles an hour, then it's going to turn in on the gas engine so that it assists the battery, just hypothetically. So five miles an hour is where the gas mileage is going to change, right? We're using a different piece of the function. In other words, it might be like, okay, you're getting super good gas mileage, and then at five miles an hour, it starts going down. So here's a separate piece. Okay, kind of those. So five miles an hour is where it changes. I wanted you to understand that that's a that's an important input because that's where it changes from this function to this function. So the first step you can do is you just take this number and you plug it in here. So we would get the point. If you plug in 5 for x, I'm going to get an output of what? What would my output be? If I input 5 for x. 9. Very good. So 5, 9, that's where it's going to change from one function to the other. So 5, 9. And then what you also do is I look. We want to decide, just like we were doing on our line graphs when we'd graph it on a number line. And would that be an open circle or a closed circle? Well, closed circle. So what I do is I put a little closed circle there. And then I'm going to plug in this one. So if I plug in 5 again, I'm going to get 16. Okay, and that's going to be what kind of circle? Open. Okay. So if we plot those, we got 5, 9. It's a closed circle. And we've got 5, 16. I can only go up to 10, but we'll just 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. It's kind of roughly. 5, 16, that's an open circle. Okay. This one has a slope of positive 2. Now it says... That's for the speeds less than 5, right? We need a slope of positive 2 for speeds that are less than 5. So just bear with me. This is a difficult section, but just kind of bear with me, and I just want you to kind of get a feel for it. So we got my slope of positive 2. Okay? So your gas mileage is really going up. So five miles an hour. And it had a, let me keep graphing here. What's the y-intercept for that first line? Negative one. So if I were to keep plotting this, okay. So it's got a y-intercept of negative one, and it's got a slope of two. Okay. Now I made it a little bit hard to graph when I put changed it to five on there. 
The other one has a slope of what? Positive three. So that's going to go up like that. That's a little bit hard for you to see, but we'll do it on a different one. So it's kind of like, here's your gas mileage right along here at five miles an hour when that gas engine, gas part of the engine turns on, then it jumps up here. Okay. Let's take a look at another one. So follow those steps. So you guys do those first two steps. Figure out your two points. And then write whether it's an open circle or a closed circle. that 4, plug it in here, half of 4 is 2, 2 plus 1.5, so it gives you an output of 3.5. <clears throat> so it's saying if you're, if we're used still with our same example, you'd say if your speed is 4, that means your gas mileage is 3.5. Sure, you, you get that. Okay, let's put it into our next one. That's going to be what kind of circle? Open. Yeah, I'm just going off of my, my inequality. It's x less than 4. 4 is not included. If we put 4 into the second piece, the bottom piece, what's the output for that? Yes. Okay. And that's a closed circle. So then you plot those points over on our graph, 4 and 3.5, that's an open circle, okay, and we have 4, negative 1, are we okay with that so far? The last piece, the third step, we just have to graph our slopes. You have to graph the lines. So they're still straight lines. It's just that, like I said, what we're adding today is that we have two of them now, pieces. This one has a y-intercept of 1.5 and a slope of 1 half. So y-intercept is 1.5. Your slope is 1 half. So you go up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2, okay. The green one, y-intercept is 3, slope is negative 1. But now we can't get, here's a question for you. If I were to draw it this way, would that still be a function? No, it wouldn't pass the vertical line test. So one thing you have to be really careful with your piecewise functions is you never overlap them. Because this would be saying, if you're going, say, three miles an hour, that would be saying that you could have, can you have two different gas mileages at the same time? No. It's got to pass the vertical line test. You can never overlap them. So we take our green point right here. I need a slope of negative 1, okay? So here's, here's this piece of the function, okay? We can't overlap them. What's that?
No, I didn't, I didn't change the slope. I'm just saying don't graph it like this. Just do this part of the line. Yeah. Okay. This is a function we could write for, I just put the price, the price of your admission is based off of what? It's a function of your age. Okay. So I just gave it a name P for price. And then it's a function of your age. So again, remember with function notation, this is just the name of the function. It's just a label. And this we're going to use for our age. How do you graph? Again, what you can just think of it, just think of what can you replace, what can you replace that with? If you want to, if you think of with y, right? So you could think of this as y equals zero, this part right here. Okay? So what does that look like when you graph y equals zero or y equals five or y equals ten? It's horizontal, right? Like y equals zero is right here, y equals five is right there. It's just horizontal, okay? So this one will look a little bit different. We call it a step function. You'll see in a minute why it looks like steps. So your price, your admission is free. If your, so now it's, here's our price. The x-axis would be your age. So you get in free if your greater than zero, but less than or equal to three. You have to pay five dollars, see if you have a little brother or sister, if they're, so one, two, three, four, five, you have to pay five dollars. If they're older than three, but less than or equal to seven, is this still, what I have drawn so far, is it still a function? If I went like this, would it be a function? No, it wouldn't pass the vertical line test. So just kind of keep that in mind. Oops. Okay. So let's do, all right. And then last, still need that. You have to pay $10 for admission if you're over seven. So... And then I'll just keep going. So anybody over 10 years old, anybody over 7 years old, I mean. That's what we call a step, because when you just have a single number here, it, that gives you that horizontal line, and you just do, you just kind of step up. Okay. So let's take a look at, I'm going to let you guys try and draw that step function. Okay, let me just, okay, so you wanted to be at 1 between negative 2 and 2, okay, and then you go up to, say, $3 in between 2 and 6. And then you jump up to five dollars from six to ten. So that's what your step function would look like. Okay. Now this one will work in the other direction. Where is the speed when it changes? where our gas mileage changes. What's the kind of the critical speed? Four miles an hour, right? If this is our speed, here's four miles an hour right there. So that's where it changes. That's where, you think like you're walking on a path, you're like you're walking on this path along here, you're going down, and then 
when you get here, like three miles an hour, 3.1, 3.2, 3.3, 3.4, 3.9, .3, and then you, what do you do when you get, when you go faster? What are you, you're walking on this path here, and then when you get here to four miles an hour, what do you do? Stop. You got to you jump onto you jump onto this line, and now you're on this path. What I meant, what I meant, okay, you guys. Nope, that's a good question. What I meant was if these are our speeds, Brandon, sit down. Grab your tissue and sit down. We got. Um, with these speeds, this is our output, say for our gas mileage or miles per gallon. So let's say this is at this is at eight right here. Again, I know this is I'm just these graphs aren't realistic for speed and miles per gallon, but so say if I'm going one mile an hour, what's my output for miles per gallon at one mile per hour? Seven, right here. 7 would be my output for miles per gallon. And then if you go my gas mileage, what's happening to my gas mileage as I go 1 mile an hour, then 2 miles an hour, 3 miles an hour as I kind of speed up? It's going down, right? So it's going down. That's what I meant kind of by walking on this path. It's going down. Now when I hit 4 miles an hour, say my engine is designed to now start getting better gas mileage as I get above four miles an hour and above. So now at this, I jump down to this one and then my gas mileage starts increasing. So let's write this out. Draw your braces. Okay. That line on the left, that path on the upper left, that has a negative slope. Can anybody see what the slope is? Looks like it's negative one, right? It goes down one and over one. So my slope is negative one. What's my y-intercept? Eight. Eight. So I'm going to use this linear function, this piece, if x is if my input is less than 4. So it's saying if you're going under 4 miles an hour, this is the path or that's the piece of the function you're going to use to calculate your gas mileage. Okay. Now for the other one, what's my slope on that one? It's a positive slope. And it looks like it's What's the slope on that lower right path? What would you say? Looks like it's up one over two, right? If you work backwards, what would my y-intercept be? Zero. So you don't have to write that on there, but I'll just put that on there so I can so we can see that we we figured that out. If my speed is greater than or equal to 4. Okay. <clears throat> Let me, um, before, I'll tell you, see if you can write this step, and then I'm going to give you another one, just like the one we just did. Okay. Write down the um, piecewise function for this step function using the proper notation. <coughs> so 
excuse me. So just, like I said, bear with me. There's a lot of information. It looked like a lot of you guys were getting this. Very good. I want you to get used to the notation because you have to have the correct notation. You have to have it written down correctly, otherwise you'll lose some points on that, okay? So we're just going to call this f of x. You put equals. And instead of it just like equaling your line, like f of x equals 2x plus 1 or whatever, there's pieces, two pieces, three pieces in this one. So draw your brace. It equals negative 3 if your speed is greater than negative 4 but less than or equal to 2. Okay? It equals 1 if x is greater than 2 but and less than or equal to 5. And then it equals what's the other output? 5 if is greater than 5 and less than or equal to 9. Okay? So if you, that's, that's how you want to write it. Let me give you a... I'll just make another one up here. So let's say Okay. Two different pieces. See if you can write the piecewise function for this one. It's not a step function. This one has slopes to it. I mean, it's got slopes other than zero, I should say. You can just use f of x again. We'll just call it a function. Uh, we'll just call it f. So take a little bit of time and see if you can get that one written out. They both have what kind of slopes? Positive. Both have positive slopes. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Let me just stop this again here for a minute. I'll come around and check. Okay, I know it's um, it's a lot to wrap your mind around. This this is one of the this is one of the most difficult sections in the book. This is one of the definitely the more difficult ones. So it, you really got to think about it and uh, take the time to to practice them. And so let's write it out. We'll just do a f of x. We got our two pieces. If we do this one right here, that's a slope of up. Oh, move my graph there. There. Whoops. Oh, I don't think there is. So we want... Right here? Okay, good. Let me just move this down a little bit. So we had this left one, this lower one here, was a slope of up to over 3, positive slope, so it's 2 thirds x. My y-intercept was negative 4. That's if x is less than or equal to 3. Okay. The other one also had a positive slope of 1 third, though, up 1 over 3. It kept going up 1 over 3. Okay. If you work backwards, that's going to have a y-intercept of... 1, and that's if x is, 
if your input is greater than 3. So we're kind of, this section really kind of combines together a lot of what we've been doing with graphing lines, with functions, with inequalities. It kind of puts a lot of different things together. Okay. Now, let me just... <clears throat> 